And uh, Lee in the in the chat room says, "Seems to me it's unrepented sin." Okay, that that is the point. It is unrepentant sin. However, the point the point in in First John five is not that you're not supposed to pray for that person. It's that we don't know if that person's going to repent or not. That's that's the point. Here, my father goes on, and this is I think this is a good point. He says, "John's point, therefore, is this: when we pray for someone who is a true believer, even in time when this person denies Yeshua, we will receive our request for his or her return, even as John states in verse fifteen, because those who belong to Yeshua will never be eternally lost." Consider this in regards to to Peter's denial of Yeshua. Before the denial even took place, Yeshua himself, fully aware that this would happen, states. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that you your faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Here we see our Lord interceding for Peter, the outcome of which is Peter's repentance and return to his walk of faith in Yeshua. So I think that, I mean, that, that right there was a slam dunk point for me. I think, you know, I was I was kind of saying, okay, I see how my dad sees it, but then as soon as he brought up Peter, it's like, okay, Yeshua prays for Peter, knowing that he was going to deny him. So uh, this shows that that John can't be saying, don't pray for a person who has denied Yeshua. It's that we don't know if that person is going to return or not. That's his point. So we don't know if that sin, if the sin of denying Yeshua at that point is leading to death or not, because they could they could have reconciliation. So we should pray for those people. Of course, um, the way that our translator in the ESV has translated it uh, t- makes it seem as though that's not the case at all. Um, but I think that uh, ultimately it's a translation issue. That's one way it could be taken. Yeah. Okay. Um, I had uh, one other thought. Okay. Well, it's it's we're uh we're talking about what was it like 25 bucks for the epistles and it's 400 pages that's like six cents a page right so it's not much so i'm gonna here's another six cents <laughs> i'm reading uh, uh from the bottom of page 304 where tim gives his paraphrase he says here here's an expanded paraphrase of this passage for back to our our passage of focus here, uh, 1 John 5, 16 and 17. If anyone, and this is quote now, if anyone sees his brother who has confessed faith in Yeshua, who is currently not walking in ways of righteousness, but is sinning in a way that does not lead to eternal death, he should intercede in prayer to God for his brother, and God will bring him back to his faith and righteous living, which will be proof that he was not sinning unto death. Granted, there can be a circumstance where a person confesses faith in Yeshua, then denies him, and never comes to repentance. This is not to prove that intercessory prayer is powerless, but rather that he was sinning the sin that leads to eternal death. But I'm not talking about that situation, for only God knows the heart, and since not all sin is that which marks a person as an apostate, that is never to be granted repentance, we must intercede in prayer for a confessed believer who is seen to be sinning, because while all unrighteousness is sin, there is sin that does not eventuate in eternal death, but when one in sinning, well, sorry, but when the one sinning is granted repentance, that sin can be overcome, and such perseverance in the faith is a mark of every true believer. I really liked that, that uh, what he called a, an expanded paraphrase of that passage. Thank you so much for watching this video. Tell us your thoughts on this subject by leaving a comment in the comment section. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and enable those notifications, and we'll see you in the next video.